everyone, this is Matt Show with Intro Stats. Uh, today we are going to do a hypothesis test for the first time. I try to put all the steps together. We've been sort of going through the different theory, all the theory and some different things about how a hypothesis test works. We've sort of saw how to write a null and alternative hypothesis, how to sort of read a test statistic. Uh, p-value, conclusions, we've kind of gone through uh, quite a bit of the, um, the hypothesis test and today we're going to try to put it all together. So start, put it, do a hypothesis test from start to finish, right? That's kind of the key to, for today. So we're going to start with uh, one of the most basic hypothesis tests, the one population proportion hypothesis test. So this is usually when you're trying to figure out uh, a population percentage. So uh, you may have, uh, maybe we think a population percentage might be this and we're trying to see it, um, if that claim holds up compared to sample data. So again, uh, let's go through first of all the steps for doing a hypothesis test. And so this is the first time we're really putting it all together. We should kind of go through the steps. We've kind of gone through each of these separately, but we haven't really talked about putting it all together. So we said that one of the, and when you do a hypothesis test, one of the first things you want to know is what type of test are you doing, right? Is it one population? Is it two population? Is it categorical data? Is it quantitative data? Am I dealing with a proportion or a percentage or am I dealing with a mean average? You know, what are those things we're looking for? And we should be able to also write the null and alternative hypothesis. Remember H0 represents what we call the null hypothesis the um, statement about the population that involves equality, alternative hypothesis, a statement about the population that does not involve equality. We should also kind of have an idea of what the claim was, what did the person say, or what do they want us to think is, um, what do they want us to, uh, to kind of uh, prove in the hypothesis test, or to see if we can find some evidence towards something. And of course, we should also think about what significance level we want to use. We talked about type 1 and type 2 errors and how that plays into the idea of what significance level should I choose for the, for the situation. Um, when you're doing these problems in the homework, a lot of times the significance level is actually given to you because of some of the calculations, a lot of times in the homework, uh, I've already got the printout for the Stat Cato printout of your, um, for the statistics for the hypothesis test, so it was kind of a, uh, I already kind of let you know what the scientist was using as a, as a significance level. Um, but if you, always, if you had to do your own test and you have to choose your own significance level, uh, we said, remember, most of the time it's 5%, right? 5% is sort of the, the standard one, though you could use 1% or 10% in certain situations. All right. Once you got that, now we're going to look at the sample data. So if you have not collected your sample data, you want to collect some sample data, and you want the sample data to be pretty reflective of the population. You want to try to eliminate as much bias as you can, make sure it's a random sample, make sure it's a large random sample, make sure there's a lot, a lot of data in it, and it, we want it to pass certain assumptions. Each test has certain assumptions that it needs to pass. Now, if you see, these are actually very similar to what we were doing for confidence intervals. They're very virtually the same assumptions as we were doing for when we were doing confidence interval estimates of the population. And then you're going to want to calculate your test statistic, your critical values, your p-value. I always say use computer software. Don't calculate this stuff by hand. Uh, you know. Um, you may see stat classes occasionally that will have you calculate something by hand. That should not be the norm. Right? You should not be calculating stuff by hand all the time. In the real world, we always use computer software to calculate this stuff. The hard, the, the, once the, everything's calculated, then it then becomes the hard part. You have to sort of figure out what does all this mean, right? What is the test statistic telling me? What is the p-value telling me? Uh, what is it? What do I know about significance? What is sampling variability involved? Um, you know, there's all those big questions that go into a hypothesis test, and that's really the hard part. That's the analysis part that we have to sort of figure out. And then we learned uh, that we can actually either reject the null hypothesis or fail to reject the null hypothesis. We said, remember, if the p-value was lower than the significance level, we would reject the null hypothesis. If the p-value was higher than the significance level, we would fail to reject the null hypothesis. 
And now we've also learned how to write a formal conclusion that addresses claim and evidence, right? We should have a conclusion that sort of addresses the original claim and how much evidence we have for what we're saying. So these are like the steps of doing a hypothesis tests. It's good to kind of have, have those steps in mind when we're, as we're going through this. Okay, so let's see a couple things here. Uh, we're doing a one population proportion hypothesis test today. So, what are the assumptions and the test statistic for that? Um, the assumptions for a one population proportion hypothesis test are really the same assumptions as a one population proportion confidence interval. Um, and these are very similar to what we did in the last chapter. So we said that we want it to be a random sample or a sample that's representative of the population. Usually that means a random sample. Um, so we're looking for a random sample or maybe some sample that we think represents the population. Individuals within the sample should be independent of each other. So, so we shouldn't have individual people that are related to each other or individual objects in the, in the sample that are, that are somehow related to each other. Um, if you remember from our discussion about central limit theorem, uh, we want ten, at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures in our categorical data. So remember, a one proportion or percentage hypothesis test comes from categorical data. We want to have at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. At least 10 people that smoke cigarettes and at least 10 people that don't smoke cigarettes, right? At least 10 uh, cars that are red and at least 10 cars that are not red. You know, it depends on whatever, whatever the percentage is you're trying to figure out. Okay? Um, and again, remember, that's tied into the sampling distribution looking normal which is going to tie into us being able to use the z-score or the standard normal distribution in our calculations. Okay, so that at least 10 successes and 10 failures is really tied to being able to use the traditional z-score test statistic. So here's the z-score test statistic. We usually use a z-score test statistic for, for one or two population proportion. That's the primary use of it. Um, so uh, it's going to basically count how many, remember, the goal of any test statistic is to try to figure out how far off is my sample data from the null hypothesis, right? That's kind of, remember, we learned when we talked about test statistics, that's kind of the idea in your head. Okay, it's trying to give me a number. It's sort of, sort of trying to tell me how far off my sample data or my sample statistic is from this parameter in the null hypothesis, right? That's kind of the idea. Well, in a one proportion test, you have a sample proportion, right? That's your sample data. And then you have a proportion, a population parameter proportion in the null hypothesis. So now we're trying to see how close are those two things, right? Or how close are, is our sample proportion p hat from our population proportion pi or p? If it depends on what stat class you're using. So in this case, what we're going to do is we're going to count how many standard errors apart are they. So how many standard errors is the sample proportion above or below the population proportion? I put that sort of sentence right here in the corner. It just to remind you, this is what the z-test statistic actually tells us. If the z comes out positive, that means your sample proportion was above. It's that many standard errors above the population parameter, the population proportion. And if the z-score test statistic comes out negative, that means your sample proportion was this many standard errors below the population proportion. Okay, so this is going to tell us the number of standard errors between p hat, the sample proportion, and pi, the population proportion. Okay, so let's say, now that we kind of got that idea, let's go and do an example. Let's kind of see if we can do this whole thing from start to finish. So, um, I use the... Um, COC uh, stat student data from fall 2015. Uh, it was a census of all COC stat students in fall 2015. It was not a random sample, but I could probably make the argument that it may be representative of all stat students at COC from all semesters, since it was a census of one particular semester. Um, I'm testing the claim that less than 10% of COC stat students carpool to school. We have a, a, actually a lot of students at our college drive, our drive to school, uh, usually by themselves. 
Um, and uh, but there is a few that carpool, and they, the idea here was to test the claim that less than 10% of the of the stat students actually carpool. So here's my sample data. X refers to the number of successes. So I had 30, and then N is the sample size. How many no, total out of 332 total stat students in the fall 2015 sem uh, semester? Uh, 30 of them said they carpool. So the first thing I need to figure out is what's my p hat. Um, again, these are all numbers really that a computer can calculate. Once you have this 30 out of 32, I could put those numbers directly into a computer software like Statcato, and I can get all of this uh, in terms of the calculation. I'm going to do a little bit more of the calculation today just so you can see what the computer's doing. It's, it's really good to have a good idea of what the computer's doing. So we'll, we'll kind of go through a little bit more calculating that I'm... That I'm uh, comfortable really, but we'll, we'll go ahead and do some of that so you can see it. So uh, the first thing I need to figure out is what's the p hat? What's the sample proportion? Well 30 divided by 32, the amount divided by the total or x over n would be my p hat. So that's going to be 0 0.09036. Now obviously the more numbers I round, like if I just wrote this as 0 0.09, it'll give me a little bit more rounding error on my z-score test statistic calculation. So um, it's not a big deal when you're calculating things by hand, but realize that computers usually will carry quite a few more decimal places than what you can do by hand. So it's okay if we have a little bit of rounding error here. We're going to be close. Uh, I've decided to use a 5% significance level. I'm not really worried about a type 1 or type 2 error. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I want to sort of make it equally that, that neither one of those errors I hope will occur. I have a pretty big sample size, 332, so I'm, I'm okay with using a 5% significance level. Alright, so we should start with what's the null and alternative hypothesis, right? I already know that this is a percentage test, right? It has a, has a percentage and it's one population in particular, COC stat students, so one population percentage would be a one population proportion hypothesis test. So I got to think about, okay, I know the type of sort of the type of test here. What what uh, what would be the null and alternative hypothesis? Well, we learned when we were writing null and alternative hypothesis, always start with the claim. The claim is that less than 10%, right? The population percentage is less than 10%. Okay.